I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Magazine, and I'm here with Jonathan Schroeder, who is the president of 3D Platform. John, your company makes a large travel industrial 3D printer with a very open and accessible design. Talk about that open design and what it makes possible. Sure, there's a lot of things that that makes possible. The open design allows users to be able to more flexibly create parts. Um, one of the things we, saw, we find is that plastic parts by themselves, although polymer technology and industrial engineering has come a long way, um, they're never going to be as strong as metal. So we find that a lot of users, because of the open platform, can put PEM uh, fasteners inside of their PEM nuts, um, put a silicone seal in it, they can run wires through parts. You're, you can essentially build a part halfway up and then run parts through it or put inserts inside of it as the process is going and then continue on. Uh, one of the demo parts that we have is a chair um, that people can sit in and the spine of the chair is a little weak if it's just made out of plastic. So we have a bent piece of sheet metal that we put inside of it. Essentially it's like overcasting. So the process builds up a certain level, you put the, the strengthening agent in or whatever you're going to put inside of it and then you can continue on. And that's simply not possible in a, in a closed machine. Hmm. I believe early versions of your printer shipped with parts that were made on the printer itself. Talk a little bit about that, how you've used 3D printing in your own production. In our machine, there's a number of parts that are 3D printed. Parts that would otherwise be injection molded, but the cost of the mold is very high. So our, our story is very similar or very typical of a small manufacturer or even a big manufacturer, a big company that's launching a new product from the beginning. You want to do that with as low of investment as possible. So there are certain parts that lend itself to the 3D printing process. And instead of making those parts out of metal to start with, we did FEA studies on it and found that a plastic part was perfectly acceptable for the start. It has almost no startup cost um, or fixed cost, but the variable cost is higher than a die cast part, which has a higher fixed cost and a lower variable cost. Once your volume picks up, you can go to casting. Just like any process, there is an economical way to use additive manufacturing. Sure. There's a cost-effective way to use it. Talk about that. Talk about the economics of 3D okay. printing. What is the cost-effective way to use this process? Absolutely. So one of the things that we find is that a lot of customers want a perfect looking part coming off of their additive equipment. And there's a economy to scale. So you have decisions to make when you choose to go and slice your part. Um, and choose to produce it. Um, for example, on FFF process, you can choose what size nozzle you want to use. And on our equipment, you can go anywhere from a 0.2 millimeter nozzle all the way up to a 6 millimeter nozzle. It's a very wide range. The 0.2 millimeter nozzle is going to give you very smooth surfaces um, on angles, and it's going to look much closer to net shape when it comes off the printer. The 6 millimeter nozzle is going to be very granular, there's going to be steps, um, and it's going to uh, require more post-processing. So, you know, we, we as a manufacturer of the equipment are not able to answer that for the customer. All we can do is point out and ask them a simple question, what's more important to you? If you look at the theory of constraints and you look at what's more important, is your machine your burden or is your labor afterwards your burden? If you have uh, plenty of manpower available to you and you want to get as many parts as possible off your printer, you are much better off printing a part with a larger nozzle that will produce much faster and then spend a little bit of time afterwards sanding that part or doing some, applying some kind of post-processing technique um, to get a smooth part. Or you have to make the decision that at the end of the day, a uh, part with some steps in it is perfectly, uh, perfectly acceptable for this jig that's going to hold my part in my shop. Yeah. So, 3D printing, well beyond prototyping, ready for production, but that means thinking about it like a manufacturer. Jonathan, thanks for talking to us about what that thinking looks like. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invite.